All right, YouTube, we're back talking kinematics, and today I'm gonna to show you how to graph the motion of an object as it moves around. Now, to help our little Lego dude move around here today, uh, we're gonna to give him a bike. So we're gonna make up some data to describe where this little guy is as a function of time, and then we're gonna generate a position versus time graph over here uh, to, to take a look at what graphically that motion should look like. Now, if we're gonna generate a position versus time graph, we need to know the different positions of this dude as, as time moves on or as he rides along this path. And so, much like any other path, there's, there's not actual numbers on this path, but we're just gonna sort of generate little numbers or some imaginary values to show where this guy is as a function of time. So let's say it's a position of zero here and a position of 100 meters over there. Now realize we could choose to call this initial position any value we want, uh, but I find an initial position of zero makes things a whole lot easier than if we were to say this was an initial position of 959 or something weird like that. So let's let our little guy move around here and we're gonna make up some data here, which we can then turn into a graph over here. All right, so let's say we've got a little stopwatch out and we hit that stopwatch the second this dude starts moving. That means at a time of zero, he's at a position of zero. We're gonna let him move along all the way to over here. So a little while later, how about, I don't know, 50 seconds. I'm just making that up. 50 seconds later, he's at a position of 100 meters. And then when he gets to this point right here, something terrible happens. Let's let's say maybe, I don't know, how about his, the, the wheel falls off our polar little guy's bike? Well, if the wheel falls off his bike, he's probably going to have to get off and, and fix the bike. Oh, and his hand, he's going to need that. That seems like a bigger problem than the wheel falling off the bike. Your hand falling off your arm. That's Call 911 for that one. But so our little guy is going to stop here, though, once he gets his hand back and try to fix his bike. But funny little guy, he left all his tools at home. There's his tools. Uh, so he's going to be stuck here for a little while. So let's say he spends about 50 seconds here trying to fix his bike. Well, that means after 50 seconds, he's still at a position of 100 meters. Now, you'll notice I put 50 right here. Uh, the fact of the matter is it's 50 seconds is the elapsed time that he spends right here doing nothing. 50 seconds go by, which is going to be 50 plus another 50 seconds. This is actually a time of 100 seconds. So 100 seconds into our little epic journey of, of bicycle edge here, he's still 100 meters out. Well, he realizes he's got no tools and he's got to go all the way back. So he's got to walk his happy self all the way back. And that's going to take a while. So let's say it's going to take another 100 seconds because he's, he's walking, he's not riding his bike. Well, 100 seconds after a time of 100 is 200 seconds. That's gonna bring him all the way back to a position of zero. And this is enough data here. So let's take this, this epic journey that has occurred here and graphically show what's going on. So here's our graph and on the Y axis, we're gonna put position. And on the X axis, we're gonna put time. Now our times run from zero to 200 seconds. Let's put zero here, and we'll run that time out on our graph to a time of 200 seconds. Now our position had a minimum value of zero and a maximum value of 100, so we're just gonna run our positions from zero up to 100. So now that we have the outline of a graph made, we're just gonna plot our four different data points on that graph. So the first data point is just the origin here. The next data point is 50 seconds in at a position of 100. Then 50 seconds later at a time of 100, he was still stuck working on his bike. And then he had to walk all the way back to where he began. That took 100 seconds. So after 200 seconds total, he's back where he began. So connecting these four data points together, we get a graph that shows us the position on the y-axis versus time of our little guy. So ultimately, the higher this line is away from our, our x-axis here, the farther he was to the right from where he started. Now, I mentioned earlier that this position of zero was arbitrary, and realize it is. It doesn't change the shape of this graph. If we had chosen to call this some ridiculous number, like maybe a position of 1,000, 
Well, that would have simply changed this initial value. Uh, we would have had 1100 there. That would have made that 1100. It doesn't change the shape of the graph. All it would do is shift that graph up or down. Now, if you look at these two different lines, you'll notice they have different slopes. And ultimately that's because when he was moving fast, his position was changing faster. So we see a steeper line on the graph. When he was moving slow, we saw a more gradual change. And so from that, you can conclude that the steeper the line is on a position versus time graph, the faster an object is moving. Now, the other thing to point out here was that as our little dude was riding along on his bicycle, his position was increasing, and that resulted in a positive slope on the graph. As he was walking backwards, his position was decreasing, and that was resulting in a negative slope on the graph. So you could say an object is moving forward when the slope is positive or backwards when the slope is negative. Now in the future, we're gonna take a deeper look at things like slope and even area under these curves in order to look at concepts like velocity and acceleration. But this has been how to graph the position versus time of an object. And on that note, that's all for now.